we are going to read from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19. verse 1 while Apollos was at Corinth Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus there he found some disciples and asked them did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed?" they answered no we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit so Paul asked then what baptisms did you receive John's baptism they replied Paul said John's baptism was a baptism of repentance he told the people to believe in the one coming after him that is in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some of them became obstinate. They refused to believe and publicly mullen the way. So Paul left them. He took the disciples with him and he and had discussions daily in the lecture of lecture hall of Tyrannus. This went on for two years so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. So that even the handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured. The evil spirits left them. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits, trying to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus, of those who were demon-possessed, they would say, In the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and I know about Paul, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. When this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Many of those who believed now came and openly confessed their evil deeds. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drachmas. In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. After all this had happened, Paul decided to go to Jerusalem, passing through Macedonia and Achaia. After I have been there, he said, I must visit Rome also. He sent two of his helpers. Timothy and Aristus to Macedonia while he stayed in the province of Asia a little longer. About that time there arose a great disturbance about the way. A silversmith named Demetrius who made silver shrines of Artemis brought in no little business for the craftsmen. He called them together along with the workmen in related trades and said, Men, you know we receive a good income from this business. And you see in here how this fellow Paul has convinced and led astray large numbers of people here in Ephesus. And in, pract and in practically the whole province of Asia, he says, Man-made gods are no gods at all. 
there is danger, not only that our trade will lose its good name, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis will be dis discredited, and the goddess herself, who is worshipped throughout the province of Asia and through the world, will be robbed of her divine majesty. When they heard this, they were furious and began shouting, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! Soon the whole city was in, up, in an uproar. The people seized Gaius and Aristarchus, Paul's traveling companions from Macedonia, and, and Russ was one man into the theater. Paul wanted to appear before the crowd, but the disciples would not let him. Even some of the officials of the province, friends of Paul, sent him a message begging him not to venture into the theater. The assembly was in confusion. Some were shouting one thing and some other another. Most people didn't know, did not even know why they were there. The Jews pushed Alexander to the throne, and some of the crowd shouted instructions to him. He motioned for silence in order to make a defense for the people. But when they realized he was a Jew, they all shouted in unison for about two hours. Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. The city clerk quieted the crowd and said, Men of Ephesus, doesn't all the world know that the city of Ephesus is the guardian of the temple of the great Artemis and of her image which fell from heaven? Therefore, since these facts are undeniable, you ought to be quiet and not do anything rash. You have brought these men here through, though they have neither robbed temples nor blasphemed our goddess. If then Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a grievance against anybody, the courts are open, and there are proconsuls that they can and they can press charges. If there is anything further you want to bring up, it must be settled in a legal assembly. As it is, we are in danger of being charged with rioting because of today's events. In that case, we will not be able to account for these commotions, since there is no reason for it. After he said this, he, uh, he dismissed the assembly. I mean. Apostle Paul always was led by the Spirit of God. Even though before, three years ago, more or less, he has taken a decision to go to Ephesus, the Spirit of God well, said no. Because it is written in the Word of God and it cannot be denied. And it, and it is undeniable that your wills are not my wills and your ways are not my ways. And, truly, Apostle Paul, just like David in the Old Testament, as he was led by the Spirit, he reached a dead end, not knowing what he is supposed to do. But he was waiting. He was waiting because he knew very well that because he has kept the commandments of God and he did not deny his name, God will open up a door for him. A spiritual law this one is. If you keep the word of God, if you don't deny the name of Jesus, an open door will be, open for, an open door will be placed in front of you. And what does that mean, keeping the name of, uh, of God? You are led by the Spirit of God. You've been taught by Jesus the walk and the path that you are supposed to uh, walk. And you know very well that the perfect love is casting the fear away. And as always, we need to go up to the mountain of God so that we may receive mercy and find grace in the hour of need. something that Apostle Paul is doing very well. And the result it was amazing. Six or less months, the whole of Greece believed. And through the guidance of the Spirit, a church was created and everything was prepared then. 
This is the secret. Where God is leading you, He has everything prepared. And what was there? Who, who was there? Apollos. Someone who was powerful in the spirit. Who wasn't exactly able to place the word of God up in the very detail to, to, to have the full revelation of the word of God. And Paul taught, taught Apollos the right way and they sent him to Ephesus, to Achaia, rather, and Corinth, where he helped uh, in the brothers there. And now Paul, along with his companions, his traveling companions, he is found in Ephesus with the guidance of the Spirit. He didn't go there because he wanted to. He went there because God led him. Help us out, Lord. And there he found 12 disciples. He's asking them now. That question that we should always make as well. Have you received the, the Holy Spirit? When you believed. You believed in Jesus. But did he give you the Spirit, the Holy Spirit? Because if he doesn't, if he didn't, how are you going to receive strength to be able to confirm the name of Jesus, to testify the name of Jesus? How are you supposed to find strength to speak together with Christ? What about all of the other questions? No, there's only one question that Paul asked. What it's missing from these 12 very good brothers is the guidance of the Spirit, the fullification, the fullness in the Spirit. And they said, and they asked a peculiar answer. We don't even know if uh, that, if for the Holy Spirit exists. And then the question, the, the, the Paul asked, then what baptisms did you receive? And they replied, no, we don't know what the Spirit is. We, uh, bapti we were baptized John's baptism. The, jo the, the, the baptisms of repentance. And immediately they were baptized in the name of the Son and the Spirit. And immediately they received the Spirit of God and they were able to receive the Spirit of God and uh, speak in tongues. And now they truly entered the will of God and truly entered the plan of God. Now God and the plan of God will start to triumph. No Paul. Because God has this to say. The fear. The name of the Lord Jesus Christ fell upon uh, the fame of the Lord Jesus Christ spread out throughout the nations. And the fame wasn't of Paul, but of Jesus Christ. Because God was performing miracles and signs through the hands of Apostle Paul. Paul, God, the Apostle Paul. And he started again from the synagogue. And spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. Some were accepting, some uh, became obstinate. And he uh, took uh, the disciples with him uh, and had discussions daily in the lecture of, hall of uh, the lecture hall of Tyrannus. And this went on for two years, but these two years were amazing because the, the, all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. Many were saved. And again, there, a, um, an amazing event also happened. extraordinary miracles through through Paul so that even the handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them something unique again happened to Paul with rather and and these extraordinary miracles happen by God again through the hands of Paul why because it was the time of the glory of God to be revealed. For the time, it was the time for the gospel of God to be preached to the nations. The same uh, applies for the seven churches in Asia 
in the Revelation, book of Revelation, these started, these started because Paul didn't do as he pleased or as he thought was best, but he was always asking for the guidance of the Spirit. Many try to imitate, and we see further down in verse uh, 13, someone called Skiva, and he had seven sons, a Jewish chief priest he was, and they decided to use the name of Jesus Christ, the name above all names, but things are not that easy. They indeed went out. And they said to the Spirit, one day in verse 15, we see the evil spirit. They, they said to the Spirit, rather, uh, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. That is in verse uh, 13. But in verse 15, we see the reply of the demon. Uh, I know Jesus, and I know about Paul. I know about both of them. I know about them in... In the Greek text, uh, it says that I am still knowing. It uses a continuous, um, it's in the continuous form. Jesus, I know, and I continue on knowing, says that evil spirit, because he's eternal. I know about Paul, know very well about Paul, because he's a human being, and I know very well about him. There's, he's not eternal. But who are you? I don't know about you. And it is a great question, isn't it? And a great example for the enemy to say to someone, I do not know you. What does that mean? I don't recognize who you are as a servant of God. I cannot recognize you. I cannot be obedient to you, but I'm using the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, but you are not baptized, you are not reborn. You are born in flesh. You're not born in the Spirit. You're not baptized in the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I know nothing about you. But Paul, I know. Also, because he is a servant of God. He is baptized. He has received the Spirit of God in him. And he is always led by the Spirit of God. I know him very well. I cannot go up against him. Please, Lord. And this is not applicable to all. May it be a case where these verses are applicable to all of us. We don't all have the same power same strength. It is very easy for the devil to drive away even the chosen ones. But who is the one who will never be driven away? The one, the person that has certain characteristics, basic characteristics. Since you have these uh, three that are necessary, faith, uh, love and patience, and hope, rather. These are not enough. They're just a basic start. But these are the two things that you need to have. Starting the Word of God and being obedient to it to the very detail, to the letter. Through His reverence, says about Jesus Christ, God was able to listen to Him because of His reverence. What does that mean? To He was obedient to the very detail of the Word of God. He started the Word of God and He was obedient to it. Then God is going to listen to you. Then and only then. And if you add to it the guidance of the Spirit, so that you may not do as you please or as you want, if you add to the guidance of the Spirit, then God, and you don't add or you don't subtract, then God will make you triumphant will lead you in your praying corner through Jesus Christ and the Spirit. He will make you a friend of His. Not calling you servants anymore, He says in His Word, but I'm calling you friends. Only if you are doing as I command through my gospel and through the guidance of the Spirit.
then I'm calling you friends. Then we will speak face to face. If you have taken the steadfast decision to walk according to, to the letter, trembling to the Word of God, and always asking for the guidance of the Spirit, then you are the friend of Christ. Your best friend is Jesus Christ, in other words. And Christ says, I am your best friend also. And we say it, I could dare say, as an example, I say it, you are my best friend. And Christ says, indeed, I am your best friend and you are mine. And not theoretically, but with actions and truth. Not with tongue but with actions and truth. You will see him closely every single day of your life. Not just once and if he appears. Every single moment in your life. You will be led by the Spirit of God with reverence. You will be able to study the Word of God. Not just read, but study the Word of God. So that God may be able to do in you be, make you able to be triumphant through Jesus Christ always. There's the result to all these things. Oh, the sorcerers, the wise men of Ephesus, they brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly in books. The value of these scrolls uh, came to 50,000 drachmas. And in this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. And the time has come from, uh, for Paul to leave Ephesus. Now he's receiving a different guidance. He needs to go to Rome. And as you abound in the Spirit, you need to go to Jerusalem. Surely you need to do that. And now the great temptation will come, a great trial to show the obedience of Apostle Paul, so that Paul may prove that he is obedient to the Word of God, to the guidance of the Spirit. With one instance that he is confirming later on, that he was in such a turmoil and he was such a, in such sorrow and he said that I was sudden so much that we were even, uh, we left the hope on living, of, to leave. We lost the hope to leave. And God allowed it because God will never allow you to be tempted more than you can handle. And with the temptation, He will also provide the solution th with the trial. Someone called Demetrius was there. A great temptation, you will see. And Apostle Paul said this further down in a different letter, that we even lost the hope to live. I do not care about my life anymore. A terrifying temptation, trial. Consider a pure joy when you fall into temptations, to trials. Demetrius now. Someone who was a, um, a silver maker. And he brought in no little business for the craftsman. And, uh, Demetrius, a silversmith rather, was making silver shrines for Ar of Artemis and brought in great business for the craftsman. But he saw truly. He saw indeed the preaching of Apostle Paul and the result of that preaching how many thousands of people were believing. Apostle Paul couldn't lay hands on each one of them but they would even bring, take handkerchiefs and aprons that he touched and he, they would place them on the, on the sick and they would be healed. He was because of that, he was afraid. He was afraid that he 
will lose his business, his income. And he gathered all craftsmen to gather all, 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 the, all the craftsmen and the workmen in related trades. And the enemy now stirred up the whole of Ephesus. And the whole of Ephesus would shout out, Great uh, is the Artemis of the Ephesians. In just a few moments, in just an hour or so. And they took Aristarchus and the Macedonians, the uh, Paul's traveling companion from Macedonia. Before that happened, we need to say that we need to confirm that uh, Paul sent two uh, workers, young Timothy and Aristus, two people that would not be able to withstand this trial. And the, he sent them off to Macedonia because God knows very well what our abilities are, how we can bear, how much we can bear. Aristus and Timothy couldn't, as Timothy couldn't also. Buried in the in in uh, in Philippi in in the um, prison there. That's why they didn't arrest them, and they took Aristarchus and Gaius. They seized them, and Paul's traveling companions from Macedonia and rushed them as one man into the theater, and they were crying out. They were shouting for two hours, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. And when the Israelites uh, wanted to push, and when they, the Jews pushed Alexander uh, to the front and some of the crowd shouted instructions to him, he motioned for silence. But they realized he was a Jew and they shouted in a unison even more. And I was praying and I was thinking to myself, what kind of a tragic situation is this? Now imagine for someone to be brought into my house, in my honor house, and take as hostages my wife and children, and for me to not be able to do anything, for me to go, not be able to even go and help out, if I go, they will kill me too. And I do not care about my own life. I have taken the decision of death. But what I'm burning about, I'm, I'm, I'm very anxious about, is that I am bound in the Spirit to live. What I'm considering is the voice of the Spirit, that I need to go to Rome and then Jerusalem. And in reality... Thirdly to Jerusalem and then to Rome. A great dilemma, isn't it? On one hand, the guidance and the instructions of the Spirit, and on the other hand, emotions and the heart of people that loves his fellow workers and traveling companions. How am I supposed to leave them behind? Am I the only one who will escape this and I'm going to leave them there to die in the theater? If we can place ourselves in this situation, that great dilemma that Paul was facing, what would you do? And that critical situation is not something that happened to Paul. It's something that could happen to each and every one of us regularly. What are you going to do with your children? What are you going to do with your wife? What are you going to do with your husband? What are you going to do with your brethren that are now in danger or anything else? What are you going to do? A great question, isn't it? Are you going, are you going out to help them or are you going to depart from them? A great question, isn't it? What are you going to do? what I would do it, as however if that was a situation as before my wife and children were cut God told me to go to a different place but when God says uh, when God says go there he also says that I will take care of the captives I will take care of all other things you need to go to the church 
and the ones that are in danger, I will take care of. But you need to think about it. You need to understand it. You need to believe it. But am I going to abandon them? You are not abandoning them. I am giving them up to the name of Jesus. Do you now understand what the secret is? When you are acting accordingly to the word of God in reality, what you are doing is that you are leaving all things to Christ. Let me say this again exactly though. Do what God is telling you to do and then all other things that you are not able to do, God would be taking care of. And now I'm asking you, do you believe it? Do what you're supposed to do, but don't say I want. Just do it. On. Don't say I'm afraid or I cannot depart from them, cannot leave them behind. Don't say In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and according to the voice of the Spirit, we need to say Amen and Amen. With the certainty, the absolute faith that God has taken care of all other things, of all other people, and with amazing blessing as well. Not just set them free. He will glorify them too. He will bless them too. But that is not possible. The whole of Ephesus is now gathering in the theater and they are shouting now for two hours. They're about to kill us. We're talking about great hatred. And many don't even know why they were there. They are stirred up and do not even know the reason why. But before we move forward, I want to repeat something. So that great message, that great uh, revelation from God. You do what I command you. Go, in other words, where I need you to go. And I will do all other things. Will make them a blessing. All other things. All other things. Amazing, isn't it? This is the truth, though. This is the truth of the gospel. He will take care of your wife, your children, your husband. He will take care of all things when you do as He commands. Not when you do what your heart tells you you need to do or your logic tells you you need to do. Because as far as the skies are, the heavens are from the earth, this is how far your wills are from God's and your decisions and your path and your wisdom. This is a great law that cannot be broken or denied. And Paul has taken the decision of death and said, My God, I'm giving them up to your hands. I dare say because I... It's not written, I do not know. And I'm going to do what you tell me to do. And a dis distraction is incoming. No. Blessing is incoming. Glory is coming. All of a sudden, uh, we see... We see the clerk uh, of the city clerk quiet, quieting the crowd and said, Men of Ephesus, you need to quiet down. He speaks out the truth. These people didn't neither rob temples nor blasphemed our goddess. If then Demetrius and his fellow craftsmen have a grievance against anybody, the courts are open. And there are proconsuls there as well. They can press charges. Is that it's that simple? And pay attention. You you need to dispurge. As it is, we're in danger of being charged with rioting because of today's events. In the case, in that case, we will not be able to account for this commotion, since there's no reason for it. If the Romans asks, if the Romans ask for the reason why this commotion was created, we have nothing to reply with. And as a miracle, the assembly was dismissed. They left. They each went to their own houses. The whole of Ephesus quieted down. 
and they left Arisakis and Gaius and the Paul's traveling companion from Macedonia. They were left free. Now imagine the glory, the blessing that they brought to God in the church of Ephesus. The, the happiness, the joy. Just after that, what would be the reason uh, that would make Paul not do the word of God? To not act accordingly to it. And the Spirit said, Paul, that you will be beaten in Jerusalem. You will be put in prison. But Paul has taken power now. I will do accordingly to the word of God. And God is going to take care of everything. Amazing, isn't it? An amazing message, isn't it? And I want to say this always. I want to do what the word of God says to me. What? says that I need to do and I have the certainty that God has taken care of all other things. Not paying attention to my own life. Whether I'm dead or alive, I am of Christ. If God wants me to be taken, amen. If He wants me to go to Jerusalem and speak and testify in front of um, kings and masters, uh, amen to that as well. All things are in the hands of God. What am I supposed to do? I need to be obedient to the gospel of God and receive the guidance of the Spirit. There's nothing more I need to do. All other things God will do. And what He is supposed to do, He will do great things. Miracles, signs. And that wasn't just it. He went for two years uh, to Jerusalem. But He also spoke in front of kings and masters priests and Jesus Christ and him crucified and when the time came to come back to Rome to go rather to Rome another kind of different another kind of difficult journey because he went into a ship and he said by the guidance of the spirit let us stay here in Crete because if we depart from here we will be uh, will be going into trouble but they didn't listen to him and again it was by the Lord that they didn't listen they didn't listen. They didn't believe in him. You are not going to tell us about the things of the sea. Well, I'm the captain and I have a crew with me and we are experiencing the sea. And when they, the weather calmed down, quieted down, they left. And But the sea stirred up and they, the, the ship was without... They had no power over the ship, but it was led by the sea here and there. And again, Paul was found in trouble again. You, we are about to drown. You didn't listen to me. But he said, blessed be the name of God because you didn't. Because there's a plan to all these things. Because an angel came to, me, to him and said, Paul, do not be afraid. You won't lose a soul. You will reach land shortly because I led you to it. Do you understand what it means from Crete to go to all the way to Malta? With with the sea being on an uproar no pedals no nothing no power over the ship God is doing as he pleases he's doing great things miracles to the th to the ones that are obedient to his word and he reached Malta and there again God blessed them and the first thing that happened in Malta is that a serpent bit him. Amazing, isn't it? I came to Malta, we were saved, but I was bitten by a snake. I'm going to die. But why? All these people in Malta, the indigenous uh, people said that he got away from the sea, but he would die by a serpent. But they were looking at him closely. He didn't die. And he, they said that he's God instead. But Paul quieted them down. And he then healed uh, the, the chief of, of the island. And then the whole of Malta heard about Jesus Christ and him crucified. And as he spent a couple of months there, he went to Rome. And there he was uh, bound again. But not in prison, but he was in a, in a house. Because Rome had to hear about the, the gospel of the Lord. And they did. And Rome did, rather. Blessed be the name of God. 
and he left. He went to Spain, Illyria, and now the, the Lord said, it's enough. Go back to Rome because the time has come for me to take you with me. They're going to slaughter you, in other words. And Paul said what? Said, Amen, Lord. But they're going to kill you. Amen to the name of God. Amazing, isn't it? Doesn't he know? Lord, please. Doesn't he know to pray in a different way? Please, Lord, change your ways. Change the things that you have uh, scheduled. But no. He went to Rome. He was put in prison. And there he confirmed the name of Jesus and him crucified. And the time has come. 68, just before he didn't see the destruction of Jerusalem. He was a blessed man. He didn't experience the destruction of Jerusalem. Just before the destruction of Jerusalem, he was beheaded. And now he is in heavens with Jesus, with God, and he is waiting for the rapture of the church, for the, the trumpet of the Lord, the call out of God. And the dead in Christ will be resurrected first. And we are indeed waiting for that moment, for the rapture of the church, so that we may meet all together in the air with Christ to see Him face to face and there understand that we are indeed in the, according to the image of God as we have a body, we have a bone and flesh, but the soul is immortal, just like Christ. Because flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But with the rapture of the church and the, ra and, and the resurrection of the dead, this body will be dressed in mortality and we will all have the body of Christ. See, a ghost doesn't have a bone, flesh and soul as I have. And there... Our Lord will be the first, son, the firstborn son amongst many brothers, and Paul will be in the midst of them, and Silas, and all other brothers, and all other examples in, uh, in through that we read through the Gospel of God. But I need to conclude with what the Lord revealed. Do according to the Word of God, and all other things God will take care for, for the blessing. For his glory, I mean.